thank you very much. What you have before you is the uh, Cardinal RG prototype exhaust by Powerflow in all its uh, resplendent glory. Missing a few pieces, as it turns out. This engine is the same engine functionally as what's on a Mooney, and we've had a uh, product for the Mooney out for several years now. The challenge was the Cardinal RG is a cowling unlike any other aircraft, and I do mean that, uh, unfortunately. So we couldn't take what fit on the Mooney and put it on here. What we could do is apply the same, essentially, correct formula to it, and that's a good starting point. And uh, if you, uh, as you get a chance, um, look around on this, and you'll see on this side, we have some incredibly long loopy tubes. Not loopy as in crazy, loopy as in very long and tubular, because we have to get the right tune length and diameter to get the kind of performance that we're looking to give. On the right side, um, you've got a situation of, you don't see a lot of uh, headers, but that's because the headers on this side are going into a long series of tubes that combined with the long tubes and short internal collector tubes equal the same or near the same length. And this is our output. This was the number one question we got asked on the um, uh, Cardinal RG forum that we host on our website. What's it look like? I couldn't really say it's long because it's not really long. I couldn't say it's short. It's not really short. It's kind of in the middle. If you see that aircraft, that's a standard RG output. See, it's kind of vertical. Ours, what you see that's silver, which is actually the ceramic coating, is all that sticks out of the cowling. It's this length because that gives us good carbon monoxide, meaning you don't get any. And it's, um, it serves its purpose. The muffler, the entire muffler for the exhaust is right here. It's the tail end. It's a cone. It's, um, there's probably an elegant term for it, but we'll call it a simple muffler. Because the more you get complicated, the more likely you are to have challenges. So the design element of that was, let's keep it as simple as we can. It's replaceable. You don't have to send your exhaust off and pay a gazillion dollars. You can actually replace that cone. The other features on this, it is missing one of the primary heat shrouds that is, going to, that is part of the design feature. And you can actually see what it looks like on that tall banner. Uh, it's not on there because we couldn't get it done in time to make it here, quite literally. This is the first pre-production unit. The prototype looked like this with many, many, many welds. So getting all the tooling and everything to this stage, of course, is, is quite an investment. So something I'm going to tell you, what's it do? Okay, The power flow concept is really simple. It's a tuned exhaust, improved performance for your aircraft. The theory is take off your old exhaust, put on your new one. It should give your engine a tremendous boost in efficiency. When I say a boost, it should be able to perform with the same relative power settings. You should get more power, more torque if it's a constant speed. If it's a fixed pitch, you should see more RPM. Obviously, an RG is a constant speed. So what's it getting? Well, it's a 200 horsepower engine, but the installed horsepower is not 200. I'm sorry if that's news to some people, but it's not. When it's rated by Lycoming, it's rated with a neutral stack, meaning something doesn't help or hurt the exhaust, not what Cessna puts on it. Same is true for any engine. Not picking on Cessna, it just happens this is a Cessna. So the reality is that this exhaust system is designed to overcome a lot of the inadequacies of the original. Now, we also have to be careful. It is possible with tuning to get up to 7% more horsepower than what the engine is capable of with a neutral stack. We essentially optimize so that we're not producing more than 200 horsepower down at sea level. The numbers I'm going to tell you are this airplane loaded at darn near gross weight. That's a funny story, but I'll tell you that after lunch. Um, and. The differences I'm going to tell you are leaning, flying the plane exactly the same profile in exactly the same way at exactly the same weights in virtually the same temperatures. Well, how about six knots faster? Oh, I misspoke to someone I quoted before. Six knots faster at 2200 RPM for a total fuel cost of nothing additional. So you went six knots faster for no more fuel. Four knots faster at 2700 RPM for 1.3 gallons less. Three knots faster at 2,500 RPM, also 1.3 gallons less. In the mid-range, around 8,500 feet, again, a similar profile. More performance, less gas. Three knots faster at 2,400, we did it for 0.4 gallons per hour less. Now, how do we know all those things? It's got an engine monitor with a fuel flow on it. So we're not changing anything other than seeing what it's reading. All these numbers are leaned 50 rich of peak. That's the power for the airplane. There's no lean of peak numbers on here. 
down at 2,500 feet, it was pretty consistent in this particular plane, with giving it a very solid three knots at different RPMs, but it was doing so for a slight improvement in, or a slight increase in fuel, which makes sense because number one, we're not leaning the engine down low. And if down low, it's going to take more gas to make more power. Up high, the efficiencies are going to kick in. That's why we can go faster for the same or less gas. Now, some people say, well, that's not possible. The major key thing is, it's not possible if you hadn't changed the brake-specific fuel consumption of the engine. That's what we've just done. So we're able to do what is considered previously impossible. Go faster, do it for less gas. Climb also improves. It's got extra performance, therefore it, 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 the climb, rate of climb will improve. Um, from a noise perspective, I don't know how many of you heard me go whipping by in my little flyby. Um, it's, uh, as measured in the cabin, the noise relatively is unchanged. It's plus or minus one decibel, which we can't hear. Now the tone is different. We will be leaving here about two o'clock today to get home in time for the weather. So you may have a chance to hear that, uh, but I doubt you'll very much hear much of a difference as we're idling or going by, because it's not that distinctive. Um, a lot of the other power flows, like the long stack power flow that you see over there, that is a lot quieter, especially on the ground. You only really hear the propeller. Um, this one's not quite as an aggressive muffler, but it is nevertheless a good muffler. What we're doing here is we are um, soliciting, I guess. Um, <laughs> We are looking. Uh, we. In the world. It is, in fact. Uh, how much, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I'm a politician. I resemble the first. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, what I'm here. Uh, the wares I'm selling is the opportunity um, to, if we can get 30 deposits on the exhaust system by June 30th, we are going to commit fully to going forward with FA certification. What's in it for the cardinal people that do that? One, if we get to 30, we get to go forward. The second is because that alleviates not all the risk, but a good portion of the risk. We know mathematically that a large chunk of our risk at that point is it goes away. We, if we build it and we certify it, we've got customers. Uh, if we get past 30, we go to 40, 50, or even 60, everybody that's a deposit holder, their price goes down. Anybody after June 30th, assuming we get to 30, their price is going to be much higher. So that's kind of a double thing. And that's what we're here to do. And the only reason why we came here and did it for the Cardinal RG is the persistence of the Cardinal people. <laughs> because, quite honestly, um, the Cardinal group, the Cardinal for proportionally, is our most successful product. We're in over one in every five fixed gear cardinals has our exhaust on it. That's a pretty spectacular success.